Well, Kamala, let's go. Challenge accepted. Are you ready? Let's compare our record point by point. She supports open borders. That's all you'd have to hear. I think two words. You know, they say, sir, go down a list. We have a list of 25 things. All you have to say is two things. Open borders, defund the police. The rest is all. But, you know, although she is going to kill Social Security, because by putting all of these illegal aliens into Social Security, it's dead. It's dead. She opposes even saying the words illegal alien and radical Islamic terrorists. She backs mass amnesty, mass amnesty, and citizenship for all illegals. She supports mandatory gun confiscation. Would anybody mind, Mr. Congressman, would they mind uh, having their guns ripped out of their arms as they enter their house or their apartment? I don't think so. I don't think. She said that 70 to 80 percent tax rate is Quote, a very bold idea, something that we have to discuss very seriously. She likes it. And you know, all my life I've watched politicians and they've always said, we will reduce your taxes, we will reduce your taxes, we will cut your taxes. They want to give you a tax increase of five times what you're paying now. How the hell do you get elected? This country is so screwed up. Everything's backwards. We want open border, we want taxing. How do you like to be a politician? We want open borders. We want tax increases. We want all electric cars so that you can go 15 minutes before you charge it up. <laughs> and for all the congressmen that are here, in the Midwest, they built eight charging stations. Now, you know what that is? That's like a gas pump with electricity coming out of it. Just a charging terminal. It cost $9 billion. Did you hear that, Mike? Did you hear that? Scott, oh, you are such, he's another tough, we got tough congressmen here. These are, these are tough cookies, these Pennsylvania guys. Wow, look at that. We're gonna introduce them in a second. Scott. So they spent $9 billion on eight charging stations, two of which never worked. I don't think any of them were. She wants government intervention to slash consumption of red meat. They don't want red meat. That means they don't want your cows. Get rid of your cows. We like, does anybody, would anybody like to keep red meat? Raise your hand. You know, think of it. Borders and electric mandate and all the things. Red meat, oh. How the hell do you get elected, right? You know how they get elected? By cheating. They get elected by cheating. Because nobody, they want to raise your taxes by five times. Oh, please vote for me. I'm going to raise your taxes five times higher. But the red meat is to fight climate change, okay? Climate change. She supports ending cash bail to immediately release criminals upon arrest. If they kill somebody, no bail, don't worry about it, no cash. You know, if you just killed three people, no. Let's let them out in Harrisburg. It's a wonderful place. And in 2020, she personally urged her followers to donate money to bail out the violent rioters, get them right out of jail, including murderers. You know what that was all about, right? And this November, the American people are going to reject Kamala Harris's dangerous liberal extremism in a massive landslide. We're gonna, too big to rig, right? Too big to rig. Too big, too big to rig. We're not going to let her turn the United States into a communist San Francisco colony. We're not going to let it happen. That's what they want to do. They want to destroy our country. She's the worst. She was a bad DA long before you had your DA, long before you had some of these DAs that you have, as you know, in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, but in Los Angeles, all over the place, all over the place. You have bad DAs. You have radical left. Horrible DAs that are funded by Soros and others, and they're weak. They're just weak on crime. They don't mind if somebody murders somebody. They don't want them to go to jail. You can kill somebody now. Our country is sick. The mindset of our country is sick. 
And we're not going to let her do to Pennsylvania what she did to California. She destroyed San Francisco, one of the best cities in the world, and it's in tatters. So she's a liberal from California. She ruined the state. She ruined this great, one of the greatest cities in the world. Chicago was one of the greatest. You know, Chicago, on July 4th weekend, had 117 shootings and 17 people died. Think of it. Uh, this is not even believable. When you hear about Afghanistan and the horrible job that this president did with Afghanistan, a low point. But they don't have, they don't have anything like that. In one of the most astoundingly phony moments in her speech last night, Kamala Harris bragged that, quote, I will proudly put my record against Donald Trump's any day of the week. I will put it against Donald Trump. Uh, this, this got one of the worst records in anywhere. Well, Kamala, let's go. Challenge accepted. Are you ready? Let's compare our record point by point. I can't believe I'm doing it. You know, the, the weird thing, I mean, two weeks ago, I was talking about Biden. I didn't even know her name. Nobody did. Kamala, hello. Beautiful. I didn't even know her name. Kamala. I heard she was a rotten border czar. That's about all I knew about her. Her only job was the border, and she never went there. But two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was all about Biden. Then I kept hearing they were going to steal it from him. And I said, you know, it's hard to do because I understand when you have the delegates. He had all the delegates. He had 100 percent of the delegates. He had 14 million votes. I said, you can't really do it. But then they threatened him very strongly. They said, you're incompetent and we're going to get you out. He just won, you know. No, they happened to be right. He was incompetent. But these are minor details. No, he just won. He had all the votes. And he could have said no, but he was afraid. And he's an angry man right now. Here's the big question I have. Will he be invited to the Democrat National Convention? Will he be invited, Mr. Congressman? I don't know. Now he will because I'm mentioning it. If I didn't mention it, he would not be invited. But now they have to invite him. But you know what's crazy, the craziest thing? So you don't mind if I go off teleprompter all the time. It's such a shame. I have these great speechwriters. They really are. Ross and Vince, they're great. They're the best speech writers. And I, you know, I hardly speak about this, but I could read the most gorgeous speech. But you may be bored to tears. No, it's, they're beautiful. The words are beautiful. Everything's great. The sun will rise. The moon will set. The oceans will listen. I say, that's beautiful. But I'm not sure that Harrisburg wants to hear that stuff. What do you think, Congress? What do you think? Doctor, I don't think so. No, they are great. But I tend to, I tend to go off about 75% of the time. But you know, the hard part is that three, four weeks ago, I was talking about Biden. He's incompetent. He's a horrible president. He's the worst president in the history of the country. Now I say she's the worst vice president, which is true. She's considered the worst. She's the most unpopular vice president in the history of the country. She did a transformation. You know, the press is very corrupt. You know that. They gave her a transformation like Houdini. That was a Houdini like, that was a magic trick. But don't worry, she's going to fall because it's not about him or her, it's about the policies. They're the same and they're horrible, right? But they gave her so, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know if anybody watch. UFC, as an example. Do you watch it, right? Dana White. The great Dana White. Did you see him? He introduced me the other... He introduced me the other day at our convention. We had the greatest convention in the history of politics, in my opinion. Thank you, Milwaukee and Wisconsin. And the arena was beautiful. It was an unbelievable. But Dana White introduced me, and he heads up UFC. He's done an incredible job. But it's almost like you're having a fight between two guys. And one guy is getting beat up bad. Then he goes to a debate, right? The debate didn't work out too well. How did the debate work out for him? I don't think so good, Scott. The debate didn't work out exactly good. Then he tried to recover from the debate by going out every day, and it got worse and worse. It was a basic disaster. 
But it's like having two fighters, and the one guy is getting beat up really badly, really. And they say, all right, stop the fight. Come on out. I'll put a new one in. That's what we have here. Kamala is the new fighter. Who cares? Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history. You know that, because you didn't have people sleeping on your lawn all night. We ended catch and release. We stopped asylum, fraud, coal. We got remain in Mexico. Remember that one? You think that was easy to get? I call up the president of Mexico, a friend of mine. He's a socialist, but still he was a friend of mine. 